The CPU that we're checking out today, due to popular demand, by the way, only costs $25, and it's actually a really hidden gem for both budget builds and budget gaming PC flips. Now, yes, there are certainly a couple of drawbacks to a CPU that's this old and this cheap, but if you're currently trying to part out an ultra budget gaming PC, like the $160 build from last month's video, then honestly, this is a really solid choice, and of course, we're gonna explain why and benchmark the heck out of it. Before we deep dive, let's have a very quick word from today's sponsor, though. Big thanks to Crucial for sponsoring today's video. And if you've been watching the channel for a while, then you'll already know that they are no stranger to my videos. Over the years, I've personally recommended so many of their products, which are great for PC builds and PC flips. SSDs like the Crucial P1, P2, and P5 get featured often, but now I don't have to recommend them myself because their new Crucial system scanner can make those recommendations specifically tailored for you. This software is trusted by millions of users, and in a nutshell, it basically scans your computer and spits out records recommendations on how to upgrade it in the future, and I personally really like using it for friends and family that are looking for upgrade options. Just tell them to run this on their PC, and boom, there's some options on how to upgrade their PC. This is 100% safe as it doesn't access any personal data, and it doesn't even install anything extra. It simply recommends any memory and storage upgrades that you should be targeting, and it also guarantees that it will only show parts that are compatible with your system. These recommendations will give your PC an instant performance boost if you follow them, and since Crucial has a a huge stack of products in the storage and memory departments, there's definitely parts out there specifically tailored for you. Click the link down in the description to try the Crucial System Scanner and make sure you use my discount code which will give you 15% off all Crucial products. This here is the Xeon E3 1240 V2, and as of quarter two of this year, this CPU is officially over a decade old at this point, which is basically an antique in PC hardware years. It's on the 22 nanometer platform, and as you would expect, this was originally designed for low-end server and office workstations, which is where you'll typically find Xeons. For some reason though, it actually sports pretty solid gaming specs as it's four cores and eight threads, and it has a base frequency of 3.4 gigahertz with a boost frequency of 3.8 gigahertz. Now compared to the almost most 6 gigahertz we're seeing with the upcoming Intel 13th gen and Ryzen 7000 series that obviously sounds omega slow, but at the time of launch, these were actually really decent speeds. The i7-3770K, which was a super popular option for high-end gamers back then, had extremely similar specs, but with a 100 megahertz increase on both the base and turbo frequencies, and honestly, that's barely a difference at all. The rest of the spec sheet is pretty similar other than the obvious changes that you would expect, such as a Xeon supporting ECC memory and the 3770K does not not, as well as the i7 having integrated graphics and the Xeon doesn't. Don't bother with those integrated graphics though, that would be absolutely horrible here in 2022. And in terms of compatibility, both these CPUs use DDR3 RAM up to 1600 megahertz on paper, and they both fit into pretty much all the same LGA 1155 socketed motherboards, so again, these are extremely similar CPUs. Where they're not similar though is the price, and that's exactly why I'm making this video. The Xeon E3 1240V2 that we're testing today can easily be found on eBay for around 25 dollars and it's readily available because of how many office servers and workstations have been decommissioned from massive companies over the years and the price of the 3770k is easily double that if not even higher for most postings and here's where you can see their true value in this budget chip now we definitely need to tame our expectations just a little bit on this one even though on paper this cpu is screaming price to performance value we have to remember that it's just a 25 dollar processor you honestly shouldn't even use this as an option unless you're actively trying to build an ultra budget a gaming PC, like that $160 build that we talked about earlier, and honestly, the build that I have here for the video is even a little too overkill for a CPU that's this cheap. I personally spent around $350 on this build, and it's indeed tuned for some decent price-to-performance value, but at this low of a budget, I would honestly recommend going completely down the price-to-performance route and not spend like $75 on the case like I did, cable extensions and all that. You gotta make a build like this a little bit cheaper. And speaking of cheap, I'm actually gonna be selling this build when we're done over on the ZaxTechRiff.com website, and our next launch is gonna be for Black Friday, and if you've been hunting for a pre-built PC, I would highly recommend waiting until you see the prices of some of our builds. It's gonna be crazy. Another thing to consider is that you also don't wanna pair this Xeon CPU with a GPU that it'll bottleneck, which definitely limits you a bit. According to PCBuilds.com, which isn't the end-all be-all or anything, but it's a decent starting point for detecting bottlenecks. Here, this even suggests that a GTX 1060 three gigabyte card would cause a small CPU bottleneck. A better pairing, according to this, would be something like a GTX 1050 Ti or even a newer 1650. But again, this is just an estimate and there are many other variables to consider, including which game you'll actually be playing. I've also heard 
heard people in our Discord community, which is linked down in the description, by the way, say that they sometimes use the CPU for budget flips and they just simply advertise that it's a 3770K alternative so potential buyers can somewhat guess what type of performance this build will get. If you are flipping a super budget build like this, then I would highly recommend putting your own benchmarks in the description so everyone can see the exact performance. You don't really want potential buyers having to look up benchmarks on a decade old CPU. And speaking of benchmarks, I do wanna to get to those in just a second, but first we gotta check out the rest of the spec sheet for our testing rate because I'm actually pretty happy with how this build turned out. For the motherboard, this is an ultra cheap Asus P8H61, and this is simply just the cheapest option that I could find on eBay. And for this video, I did not bother to look for one that supported overclocking. Don't get me wrong, back during the time that these chips were popular, overclocking was way more relevant than it is today, but I simply didn't want to invest the time or money trying to do that. So I just got this ultra cheap motherboard that I found on eBay for $40. And as a side note, this is actually the second motherboard that we bought for this project. I originally found a $30 Asus H61, which is obviously a much better deal, but somehow during production, one of us here in the studio accidentally bent a ton of pins while carrying it with the IO shield still in the bag, so we had to buy another one. I'm still not 100% sure on who actually bent all of those pins, but what I do know is that me, Brian the videographer, and Sam the benchmarker all carried the motherboard with the IO shield right on the pin, so it's kind of all of our faults because none of us decided to pull it out of there. <gasps> It's definitely a team loss on that one. Moving on to our RAM though, which is also somewhat of a loss because of the price. This is a DDR3 HyperX 2x8 gigabyte kit that's clocked at 1600 megahertz. And this was simply the cheapest white stick of RAM that I could find at the time. If you are actually building a budget Xeon build, I would indeed recommend going with whatever color you can find because you'll be able to snipe a kit for much cheaper than what I paid for it. For the SSD, this is again, just the cheapest option that I could find. This is the ADATA SU635, but this one is actually always a safe bet for a 2.5 inch budget SSD. Remember that there's certainly no M.2 NVMe slots on motherboards this old, and you can usually find 500 gigabyte 2.5 inch drives for around 30 to $40 quite easily. PNY has their CS900 that goes on sale often down to $35, and the Silicon Power 500 gigabyte drive can sometimes drop to $30, which would be a really great deal. And next up, we have the power supply, and like I've mentioned in multiple videos now, this Thermaltake Smart BM2 550 watt has been consistently selling for brand new on Amazon for $35 or $40, and for a budget tier C unit, this is a good pickup. However, if you are trying to build that ultra budget, less than $200 Xeon build like this, then chances are you're probably gonna go with a used power supply and somewhere like EVGA B stock would be a great spot for that. And getting towards the end here, we have the case. And this one definitely doesn't need an introduction to the channel. I paid $75 for this Montec Air 100. And this is always a beautiful option because of its micro ATX size, four pre-installed RGB fans, its aesthetics, of course. But ultimately, this is a little overkill for a PC featuring a $25 CPU, in my opinion. And that applies to our CPU cooler as well. You don't really need a cooler like this, and I chose this one just as an aesthetic play, but the SE214 XT from ID Cooling is a great option for its budget $20 price. Feel free to go with something even cheaper like the Cooler Master i30. That'll get the job done as long as you aren't overclocking, and all of this is linked down in the description, by the way. And of course, you know your boy threw in some cable extensions into the mix. Again, it's extremely overkill for a build like this, but if there was anyone on the internet to pair cable extensions that cost more than the CPU in the build, it would be me. Please remember that I don't actually recommend you follow this as a build guide, this is essentially just a pretty testing rig for the $25 E3 1240V2. Regardless though, this new Pro Kit from Asia Horse is absolutely beautiful because it's rocking the all white connectors, which looks so much better than black. And I love how the blue one here matches perfectly with the motherboard accents. And no, that wasn't an accident. Aesthetics over everything, even with the Xeon builds. Asia Horse actually sent these out to be featured in a build guide video. And I can only imagine their faces when they see what build that I actually decided to put them in. <laughs> And finally for the graphics card, which I briefly talked about earlier, this is the GTX 1063 gigabyte that I already had in the studio because of a previous project, but a better pairing would be the GTX 1050 Ti or GTX 1650 if you wanted a more modern option. By having a slight CPU bottleneck setup though, this allows us to really push the CPU to the limit and see what we're really working with for some of these titles. Now using something completely overkill like an RTX 3080 would have been a more professional way to do that, but that's obviously not how we roll over here. All in all, here's what the full testing rig is looking like. And if you are indeed interested to build like this, be sure to not spend as much money as I did on the aesthetics or just buy this for yourself on our Black Friday website launch like I said earlier. But now it is time for the benchmarks finally and starting with Fortnite of course, I was surprised to see Sam actually use 1080p Pro settings instead of 1080p performance mode and wow, he actually got a score of 129 FPS and that's just incredible for a $25 CPU. Do note that our 1% low is in the single digits and I'll guess that we'll see that often here for the Xeon but still very good results to kick off this benchmarking run. Apex Legends was up next and yeah, this 
is way better than I expected as well. He got 96 frames per second again with a low 1% number, and this was at 1080p in medium settings. Minecraft trailed after that, and with 1080p in fancy settings, we got 168 FPS, and yeah, consider myself shocked. I didn't think that the results were gonna be this good. Those are great results for Fortnite, Apex Legends, and Minecraft, you know, like the three most popular games that like 90% of PC gamers are playing. These are really good results for a $25 CPU. Now, of course, we got you covered with Elden Ring just to bring us back to reality, and here I see that Sam had to turn the resolution down to 720p with low settings, and we still got 44 FPS. Very playable, mind you, though. After that, we tested Grand Theft Auto V, which is definitely good for CPU testing, and in 1080p high settings, we still got well over the 60 mark with 84 FPS. Halo Infinite followed up after that, and in 1080p with low settings, we got again above it with 68. Lost Ark was next, and in 1080p with very high settings, we got 117. Call of Duty Vanguard in 1080p low got 81 FPS, and if you're wondering why we didn't test Valorant this time, after immediately asking Sam where the Valorant benchmarking run was at, he told me that our benchmarking drive has Windows 11 loaded on it, and since Valorant requires TPM 2.0 on PCs that are running Windows 11, we actually couldn't properly benchmark this game, or even open it up. This seems to be a pretty popular issue among the community if you're running ancient hardware like this with Windows 11, so definitely keep in mind that you may want to run Windows 10 on a system like this if you're planning on playing Valorant, and if there's any other games that have this requirement. And then of course we also benchmark 3D Mark Time Spy action, and this $25 Xeon gaming PC build cranked out a score of 3,846. Again, this really surprised me as this is a very solid score for the price. And just to throw some more numbers into this section so this video doesn't feel like a waste of time, here's some more titles that we tested and we got pretty similar results using 1080p and mostly the lowest settings. I do love to see Cyberpunk actually getting playable results in 1080p and seeing us cross the 10k mark in 3D Mark Firestrike is amazing as well. Please remember that I would only recommend buying this CPU if you have an ultra strict and low budget of like 150 to 200 dollars, but chances are if you're still watching this video at this point, then you're probably interested in actually doing that. Be sure to let me know down in the comment section if you are going to, or if you have already used this in a build. And if you want to see a different way of building an ultra budget build, but with a more mainstream CPU, then feel free to click the video that's on the screen now.